Hi everyone, this is the last page of the Chapter 5 Test Review for Algebra 1A. Um, this is looking at systems, inequalities, absolute value, I think that's just about everything that was included in this chapter. And so we start off here with number 24 with a system. And you really can choose if you want to do substitution or elimination here. The fact that this has y all by itself here makes me think substitution is going to be easier to do. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to take this thing that they gave me for y. I'm going to plug it in for y right here. So when I rewrite that bottom equation now, it looks like this. x minus 5. But then in place of y, I'm doing negative 3x plus 136. And then continuing on with that bottom equation, it's going to equal negative 40. And then I'm solving from there. So I'm going to distribute my negative 5. So I end up with x. Um, negative 5 times negative 3x would be 15x. Negative 5 times 136. Oh, if it wasn't so late at night, I could probably figure that out. Um, looks like negative 680. And then that equals negative 40. Probably the first thing I would do from here is get my x's together. So x plus 15x gives me 16x. And then I'm going to continue this up here. Um, next, I'm going to add 680 to the other side. So when I add 680 to a negative 40, I'm going to get 640. So 16x equals 640. And then when I divide, let's see, 16 goes into 64 four times. So I believe I'm going to get 40 here as an answer for x. Then I'm taking that 40, remember, and plugging it back in over here where I have what y equals, right? So I'm going to go y equals negative 3 times 40 plus 136. Well, let's see, that's negative 120. So negative 120 plus 136 is going to leave me with positive 16. And so then final answer there on that one would be 40 comma 16. Okay, kind of big numbers for what you're used to with those problems, but that is correct. Okay, we're looking at graphing, and we're graphing with absolute value. Remember those absolute value brackets. Um, immediately, as soon as you see this, I want you thinking, this graph is going to be a V of some kind. Okay, when you see absolute value, make sure that your final picture comes out looking like a V. All right, we're going to talk through how to do this on the calculator. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to my y equals, clear out anything that's in there, and I'm typing in negative 2. And then remember to get to absolute value, I'm hitting the math key, going over to number, and that very first option there is absolute value, x minus 4 inside of there. Close the parentheses, and then I'm putting a plus 3 out on the outside. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit graph, so just so I get an idea of what this picture should look like. This is what I should be seeing. But when I want to transfer this to my drawing, I'm going to do it using the table. Okay? Whoa, and those table numbers are gigantic. So I'm going to go into my table settings. Um, this is where it says table start. I'm going to start that over at zero. Um, those look like nicer numbers. Okay. So let's see what looks reasonable here. I'll start with that negative 1. So we can graph negative 1 negative 7 be there 0 negative 5 1 negative 3 do I really need to be graphing every single one of these points probably not but I do want to make a point here that if you stop too soon so if I go 2 negative 1 if I say man that's four points that's plenty of points um, I should be able to draw my graph now there will be some people who will do that, and then they just draw me a nice straight line. Okay, It doesn't work that way, right? We, we said that this graph should look like a V. So I need to keep going until I can see the other side of my V. And I happen to notice in my table that this is where my other side of the V comes from. See how these numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then all of a sudden they start getting smaller again? That's where the V portion comes from. So let's see, where did I leave off? I did 2, negative 1. Um, 3 comma 1 would go here, 
4 comma 3 is here. And then I believe they start coming back down. So 5 comma 1, 6 comma negative 1. Oh, where's my 6 comma negative 1? They go here. Keep going. 7 negative 3, 8 negative 5, and 9 negative 7. Okay, so like I said, you didn't necessarily need all of those points plotted, um, but enough to make sure you can see both sides of the V. All right, you do want to make sure that your picture some way, somehow, is taking on a V shape. Okay, so that's what that graph would look like. Okay, looking at 26, um, this is an inequality. I, I did this very specifically on this review. We look at 26 and 27 compared to each other, okay? These are two different problems. 26 is just a regular old inequality. It does have parentheses in there. I'm going to have to do some distributing, but it is just a regular inequality. 27 has absolute value in it, and that's automatically going to lead me to like two separate parts of my solution, right? Um, that's going to be a compound inequality, meaning I'm going to have two parts to it. So watch what's going to happen with 26. 26 I'm going to distribute here. So I'm going to get 6x minus 3 is less than 27. Add the 3 to the other side, so I get 6x is less than 30. And then divide by the 6, and I get x is less than 5. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, on my number line, I'm going to throw a 5 down here somewhere with an open circle, and I'm going to shade everywhere to the left. Okay, so that would be less than. That's the direction that's less than 5. And again, if you wanted to check and make sure you were correct, if I plugged in some number from over here, some number that's less than 5, um, so I'm going to go with, I don't know, maybe negative 7. Okay, if I plug in a negative 7, 3 times 2 times negative 7 minus 1. My hope is that this is going to come out to be something smaller than 27. And it does. Negative 45 is significantly smaller than 27. Okay? So let's talk about how that's different in the next problem. With that absolute value thing there, um, I can't distribute the 3. Okay? I can't do the same thing I did up here. So what I have to do instead is I have to divide by that 3 to get rid of it. Um, I do want to point out that technically I could have done that up here. I could have divided by the 3 on each side to begin with, and maybe I'll show that in just a second. But that's going to leave me with this. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 9. Okay, and again, think about what this is saying. This is saying that... Um, this number inside of here, whatever it is, has to be less than 9 spaces away from 0. That means it can go out to positive 9, but it can only go down to negative 9 in this direction to stay within those parameters, right? So right here, we're going to write two separate inequalities, okay? We're going to have one that says 2x minus 1 is less than 9. But then we also have to have, and this is going to be an and situation, because remember we said we have to stay below 9 but above negative 9 at the same time. That whole idea of being at the same time means that this is an and. So 2x minus 1 also has to be greater than negative 9. So when I solve this one, I'm going to add 1 to the other side. I get 2x is less than 10. I divide, and I get x is less than 5. Notice that that's the same thing I got up here, okay? But I have this extra piece with this one. When I add 1 to the negative 9, I get negative 8. So 2x is greater than negative 8. And then divide, and I get x is greater than negative 4, okay? So now I have to stay below 5, just like I did up here, but I also have to stay above negative 4. So that's going to look a little bit different. I'm going to have a 5 here with an open circle, just like we did a second ago. But then down here somewhere, I'm going to have a negative 4 with an open circle. And I need to stay within those boundaries. I can't go below negative 4 or my absolute value is going to drop. Okay. So if you think about um, that negative 7 that we just plugged in, that negative 7 would be down here, right, below negative 4. I got something with an absolute value that's less than 27, okay? 
negative 45 by itself is less than 27, but the absolute value of it is not. Okay, and that's why that's why we have to put this other limit on it. Okay. Okay, I think on the final printed answer key, I'll show how to solve this one using this same method, just so you can see kind of the comparison between the two. But for now, I'll move ahead to number 28. Okay, so 28 is a word problem. This one is not broken up in as many steps as the last word problem we did. Um, we're ordering food at a fast food restaurant, burgers and fries here. Um, and the final question is, you know, if you were to order a burger and fries, how much would it cost? Before we can answer that question, really what we need to know is what's the cost of just a burger and what's the cost of just an order of fries. So for defining my variables here, I'm going to say that B represents cost of a burger. And F represents cost of fries. Okay, so now I'm going to write an equation for Joe's family. Yeah, Joseph's family and an equation for Kathleen's family. Okay, so Joe's ordering three burgers and two orders of fries. So cost-wise, he's doing three times B plus two times F. And total cost of his meal is $19.97. Kathleen is ordering five burgers and three orders of fries for $32.45. So the first step here is just to solve this thing for B and for F. And then I can use those numbers to actually answer the question. Um, I'm probably going to use elimination here, but this isn't going to be a super easy elimination one. This is one where I'm going to have to change both. Um, I'm going to go for the 2 and the 3. I'm going to make them both into 6s. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3 to make a positive 6. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2 so that I end up with a negative 6 here. So top equation now says 9b plus 6f equals whatever 3 times 1997 is. Um, it's going to be 59 something. Let's see. Yep, 59.91. My bottom equation multiplying by negative 2, I get negative 10b minus 6f equals negative 64.90. Okay, so now let's add these two equations together. 9 plus negative 10 gives me negative 1. That's not too bad. My f's cancel. That was the whole goal. And now I'm going to do 59.91 minus 64.90, and I end up with negative 499. So if I were to divide by that negative 1, I would find that the cost of a burger is 499. Okay. Now we should be able to go back and use one of these equations to figure out what the cost of an order of fries would be, okay? Um, and I'll just use maybe that top equation, the 3b plus 2f. I'm going to kind of try to squeeze it in here. So really what I'm doing is 3 times 499 plus 2f equals that 1997. All right, 3 times 499 is 1497. Oh, so close. Um, subtract that 1497 and I get that 2f is equal to five dollars and then divide by two and I get that the cost of an order of fries is 250. So that's not technically what the question was asking, right? The question didn't say, what is the cost of a burger and what is the cost of an order of fries? But I had to find those two things first. And now what I can do is I can take those and I can use it to answer this question. If I order just a burger and an order of fries, I'm going to be paying $4.99 plus $2.50. And I believe that's going to leave me at $7.49. Okay, let's see, 5, 6, 7, uh, which was, yep, 749, just double checking. Okay, so this would be my final answer, but I had to get these two things separately first.
Okay, I think there's just a couple more to go on the back side of this page. 29. Um, another inequality here. I threw this one in here because this is definitely one that's a struggle on the test itself. There was one similar to this earlier in the packet too. Um, I need to deal with these parentheses. First of all, I do want you to notice this is not absolute value. So I'm not going to have two separate statements to be working with here. I'm just solving this thing. Um, but I do have to deal with that negative sign. So this negative sign is going to end up distributing inside of here. And I'm going to be left with 5. When I say distributing, I mean that I'm subtracting 2x and I'm subtracting 5. And then that's greater than or equal to negative 6. Well, I would probably combine my 5 and my negative 5 next, but really what's going to happen there is positive 5 and negative 5 cancel. Now, do keep track of the fact that that's a negative 2x, okay? So, and actually, let me circle that quick. But this is what I'm left with, is negative 2x here on this side. So now I have negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And my next step would be to divide by that negative 2. But remember that when I divide by a negative number with inequalities, it's going to flip. So I'm left with x is less than or equal to positive 3. Okay, And so I'm just going to throw 3 on my number line. That is going to be a closed circle. And I'm shading everywhere less than, so everywhere to the left. Now, if you ever get yourself into a situation with one of these where you get to the end and you're really not sure if it should be less than or greater than, like maybe you're questioning whether or not the sign needs to flip, or maybe you're worried that you screwed up something with the negative back here, um, pick something on either side of three. Okay, so let's say, let's say that we had not flipped the inequality. Let's say we had left it as x is greater than three, and we wanted to check and see if we were correct. I could pick something greater than three. So maybe I'll pick, I don't know, 7. And so I'm going to plug that in right here. So I'm going to go 5 minus parentheses 2 times 7 plus 5. And our hope is we're going to get something greater than negative 6. Okay? See what happens. That is not greater than negative 6. Okay? So that would be an indicator that I'm on the wrong side of the 3. Right? I don't want numbers that are bigger than 3. If I choose something smaller than 3, like let's say 1, Okay, so instead of the 7, I plug in a 1. Now let's see if we get something greater than negative 6. Negative 2 is greater than negative 6. I know the negatives are confusing that way, but it is. Okay, so that one's correct. Okay, 30. We're looking at a system of inequalities. And so I, I want you to pick up on the fact that this is one inequality right here. I'm kind of trying to shade it in lightly. And then this is another one. Okay, so we've got kind of two separate lines making up this inequality. Um, I'm going to start with this one. And so for this line right here, we're going to need to write it in y equals mx plus b form. The b value would be this right here, and that looks like a y-intercept of 2. Oh, I want to do this. That's 2. Um, the m value, so I'm going to go from here up to another point that looks like it's pretty solid. I think this one looks good. So to go from this point to this point, it looks like I'm going up 3. And over 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So that's a slope of 3 fourths. X. Um, if I look at that line and where the shading is, the shading is underneath that line, right? So this is going to be a less than. Um, it is a solid line, so I'm going to go with a less than or equal to. And so my first inequality is this thing right here. Okay, y is less than or equal to 3 fourths x plus 2. So Really, what this should be is it should almost be like a, a full line drawn here, and then all of this being shaded, and then we would graph something else and do all of that shading, and this really represents like that overlap. You're only seeing the overlap in this picture. Okay, this line right here is just a straight horizontal line, okay? So a horizontal line doesn't, it really what it has is a zero slope, 
okay? It's just going to be like y equals a number. That's how we get a horizontal line. So for this guy, we're kind of using y equals something, okay? That something would be 2, right? It's passing through at y equals 2. All the shading is above that line, right? So I'm going to use a greater than. And it's a dotted line, so I don't want an equal bar this time. So my second inequality is y is greater than 2. And so this right here would be my final answer as far as my system goes. So there's the inequality that represents that line. Here's the inequality that represents this one. My system is both of them together. Okay. Okay, that does it. That's the entire Chapter 5 review. Um, hopefully you have made some good progress and learned some things that maybe you didn't know before, and um, we'll hope that that means you're ready for your test. All right, we'll see you in class.